We're just getting down to about 250 feet and then we'll be ready to dive. Par 300, ready to dive. 15 copies. Par 300 copy, switching to OTS gears. I have a gamma in sight. I'm gonna just do some circling and see if I can get some video on my head camera around gamma. We'll see you on the bottom, Cliff. Roger that, gamma. Okay, R300 and gamma have turned on lights. About 120 feet deep. Visibility very poor, maybe 10 feet, 20 feet. All right, about 154 feet. I'm on the uh, starboard side of Gamma, uh, probably within 10 feet of his vessel. Visibility very poor. There's about 300 right next to us. We are so neutral, it's unbelievable. Two feet from the bottom. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Did you flash him first? Yes. Okay. Seven feet from the bottom. All right, let's see if it comes into view. There it is. So you're almost touching, yeah. So we're on a slope going yeah. up. Going up, so we're heading towards shore. So we're heading towards shore. Okay. Oh yeah, he's dragging in the mud too. This is like being in outer space. <laughs> so what I do is I go up on air to save power. Oh. And then uh, I let it out as I go up. Yep. And then when I get to the top, it's pretty much gone. We're 14 feet off the bottom, 15 but feet. But doesn't it take more power to compress the air into your tanks than, I mean, it seems like motoring up would be more efficient. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a second compressor. Okay. So when I get to the surface, I switch to a low pressure, yep. high volume compressor, yep. and blow the tanks. Right. Then you only use right. 20 yeah. pounds per yeah. dive. Right. Right. Okay, we're almost at the surface. There's nobody above us? Nobody's above us. Okay. And we are. We're on the surface. So I study paraphyton, which is algae that grows on the bottom and the sides of the lake. Um, it is it photosynthesizes, and um, so it kind of grows up into these sort of strands from the bottom. Um, so it's actually a really broad range of things. So some of them are hard, and they kind of coat the bottom in a thin surface and then sometimes they grow on top of each other and they kind of get into these fingers that sway in the wind and they're actually really beautiful when you look underwater. They're really cool because they take um, nutrients that are floating in the uh, lake and aren't necessarily available for all of the ecology in the lake and they convert them into a form that can be used by animals within the food web. So they're really important in terms of nutrient cycling within the lake. The reason I'm studying them is because 
their life cycle and some of the factors that affect how much parafitin there is around the lake are really um, still quite unknown. Uh, we know that certain things like light, uh, nutrients, temperature, um, all affect parafitin, um, but we haven't really figured out how all of those together work to create a certain amount of parafitin um, around the lake. Yeah. I expect an ecstatic journal entry. <laughs> Dear diary. Dear diary. Dear diary. Alright, here I go. Ooh. This will just switch up to the front. Side. Okay. Wow. She's already going bananas. <laughs> she likes dogs too. That's my <laughs> kind of girl. You definitely get the points for enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> One man of dust is another person's organism. Yep, yep. <laughs> okay, so we're five feet off the bottom. Oh yeah, I'm starting to see brown coming up. Oh, and it, we're here, we're here. Yeah, it's, it's on the ground now. Boop. Oh my god. No, that's dust. <laughs> or like maybe, I don't know, maybe it was some... It looked like mice, but they were white. <laughs> so I guess it's not, because I don't think mice are white. Oh, wow. So cool. Hello guys! So you see, if we were to travel around, we could run right into a line or a Yeah! Or a camper, <laughs> I couldn't see that. <laughs> a tree. Oh, there's little things swimming Yeah, there. yeah, that's what I'm saying! Oh, look at them all! I know, little tadpoles. Okay, they're we not tadpoles, but... I don't... I don't Everywhere. really... Yeah! It's like coating the bottom. Oh, wow, there's like a bigger... Oh my gosh! <gasps> What? Wait, can you go backwards? Uh, it'll dust right up. Okay. I go on these trips and I forget to eat. <laughs> it's too exciting. It is. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> so I take this opportunity on the ascent to eat my muffin. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, wow. The surface is so pretty. Yeah, so it was amazing. Um, we went and I think we went down to 210 or 220 feet. Um, we saw, we didn't see parafitin because the visibility was really low. Um, it was really turbid. But what we did see um, was a ton of mice shrimp, so little shrimp like this size um, that were scurrying along the bottom. And there were hundreds and hundreds of those all across the bottom. And then, in addition to that, we saw crayfish, which were probably, you know, about an inch. Um, and at that depth, they look kind of like um, a tan color because the red doesn't go all the way down. Um, but those are like little tiny lobsters. Um, so we saw probably about like seven or ten of those, um, which was really, really neat. Um, those actually eat parafitin, so that's cool. That is part of the food web um, here. And then, aside from that, um, just kind of watching um, as we went down, watching the light disappear was amazing. Um, and then watching the um, sand kind of mix in with the clear water um, and watching the fluid dynamics as that mixing occurred was really, really cool. It's kind of like a swirling pattern. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to see some of that footage too. It was really different than scuba diving or swimming or anything that I've done before underwater. Um, just because you're in sort of a bubble and um, you kind of have this separation between uh, you and the actual um, water, but you can see everything. Yeah. The hypothesis is at the top of these mounds, it's more preferable for um, parafitin or bottom dwelling algae uh, and plant matter to live, um, which would then support the, the, yeah. the lake trout and fish down there. So I don't know much about the submarine. What is it rated to? Originally it was rated to a thousand feet, mm -hmm. which every modification that's been done to it has maintained that thousand okay. foot rating, but it has not been uh, pressure tested okay. to 
to use it to that depth. Yep. For me, the real joy is building it. Yeah. It's act to me, it's it's more fun building it than using it. Mm -hmm. But because I have it, I really should use yeah, it. Of course, okay. of course, yep. Why would you have a flood valve in the first place? Well, the only way to escape a submarine at depth is to fill it up is, with water and swim right. out. Yeah. So this submarine actually has an escape pod. Okay. Really? In the back. Oh, you climb in there? Yeah, and so there's the hatchway in down Interesting. there. Interesting. So it's kind of a one of a kind. Yeah. But so. Tight fit. It's a one person escape. <laughs> okay. Because I'm usually by myself. Right, yeah. Camera's going away for one hour. So the sub's cooling off. So the yeah. air is shrinking. So I'm just going to let a little air in here. Awesome. And that's going to equalize it. Wow, look at the color change. This is beautiful, wow. buddy. Look at the, I, I wish I knew more about geology and stuff. It's very barren down here. Only, it looks like only a tiny bit of loose sediment on top of rock. How cool is wow. this? Do you want to head left or straight? Or you um, just tell me what you like. We can just ride the ridge. Sure. What do you think? Look that at that. Nice. That's like pretty gorgeous. That is something else. We'll just ride this up. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good to me. Is that a rope laying? Yeah, it's an old rope. I think it's been there a while, it's under these rocks. I wonder what that rope is from. Well, we put rope in here all the time, so all you need is... Well, a, luckily uh, it's not buoyant rope or we right. would be out of here. Yep, I understand that. There's a live crayfish hiding under the rock right there. And that's all. He should come into view of the camera. Yeah, I see him, look at see that. Him around. That's cool. under there another one. Oh, there's a bunch of them they're in they're under all the rocks here all the crevices yeah there's I one moving right in front of us oh that's cool um, well, first thing I want to say that that was a lot of fun. That was amazing. I've never done anything like it before. Um, it was really cool to see the bottom somewhere where I've been working and it's it, before this it was just a mystery to me exactly what it would look like. We're always putting things down to the bottom, but it was cool to see it for real. Once we hit the bottom, we were able to follow the slope up uh, and find one of those large mounds that we were mentioning before. Uh, and we followed that up along and the, it turned from a, a bit of muddy sand to actually these cool rock formations um, with only just a tad bit of uh, mud be on top of them, which was pretty cool. Um, not much life initially, but as we worked our way up the mound, we ended up seeing uh, specifically crayfish, one of the things we were looking at, trying to find where they live, uh, hiding underneath these little rocks, which is pretty cool. I hope we caught them on camera. Uh, also some other little plankton and then little tiny floating invertebrates. A couple fish, for real. Um, good size. And uh, the one thing we didn't see was uh, any of this paraffin or algae or plant matter that would be the nice spawning grounds for fish. Um, so that was interesting uh, to not find. We went all the way to the top and over the top of one of the mounds uh, and didn't see it. So that's uh, interesting to know that uh, not on all these mounds will we find the, the spawning grounds we were looking for.